Hello everybody, Scott Stevens here. Monday, November 26th, uh, mid-evening mountain time. And uh, look at the surface map. We've got nice high pressure sitting across Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, uh, Missouri with chilly air with temperatures a little bit frosty in uh, Nebraska already at evening. We've got middle teens. And then the cold air now surging southward through Texas as the cool front hasn't quite reached the Gulf Coast. It'll probably achieve that location by morning. Otherwise, uh, we've got some rain developing along this front along the front from Texas on up through Tennessee with temperatures and dew points, at least dew points returning into the 50s and uh, at least 40s and 50s, probably some low 60s right along the Gulf Coast. That moisture now streaking towards the Appalachian states and then eventually into the cooler air where we will likely see some sleet and some snow deeper into the cold air through Illinois, Indiana, where that cold north wind is intersecting this, uh, this chilly air out west. We have had some gorgeous weather with temperatures 60s and 70s with abundant sunshine, even if it is littered with trails and the skies have gone hazy milky white but things are changing especially in the Pacific a reconfiguration of the jet stream coming this week will be well underway in about three days time and uh, an onslaught of monumental amounts of water appears to be headed for Northern California into Canada it is cold it is cold it is cold from uh, the Prairie Provinces back towards British Columbia, especially northern BC, and then through Alaska with teens and 20s below zero are not uncommon. The coastal areas are much, much closer to the freezing mark. Here's our snow where we have the rains breaking out from the Rio Grande Valley of Texas across the hill country through and just north of the Gulf Coastal areas. And you can see across uh, Louisiana and uh, Arkansas this evening, the rains are beginning to light up. Even if you have your thunder showers embedded therein, all of this water is certainly welcome as uh, the rains uh, couldn't have arrived at, well, they could have come a little earlier, but they're certainly welcome. And then there's the snow on the north side. Lake effect snows from Traverse City, Michigan, up uh, along uh, Houghton and uh, off of Lake Superior, and then some coming in uh, through the Adirondacks, all those light snows. As we move to the west, we'll take a look at the visible satellite imagery, and you can see some of the Kim Trail clouds that were rather thick from Idaho, Oregon, Washington, and then you can see them uh, contrasting with the Pacific Ocean here, just off the coast of Washington. And then this is our big weather maker. This is one of several weather makers that is just about to take aim onto the west coast. There's a nice plume of tropical moisture down to the south with all kinds of um, well, let's just say filleted clouds in here because it looks like we have a, a backbone of a fish with the clouds streaming off the side of it. And there were numerous trails across Baja, across Southern California, with this cirrus canopy that began across the Southern Arizona. What was the time of this image? Probably a 2030Z, so uh, early afternoon, mountain, mountain time. Uh, and then a lot of cold air backed up along the front range of the Colorado Rockies today. We're underneath this deck of low clouds and the very weak late November sunshine temperatures just did not recover much. And you can see this white shield across Nebraska in through, uh, and through Wyoming. This is all snowpack. This is snow on the ground. And then we get back into high clouds and of course littered with, with chemtrail clouds as well. Let's move off to the east and we have uh, another developing storm to the south. This is our light rains that have now turned to snow as daytime has turned to evening and then the developing showers and thunder showers as they were over Mexico earlier today. And then as we look at the satellite imagery, I'd really like to like look at down here first. We'll go to Texas. We can see how this cloud across the, the big bend area of Texas is now beginning to streak off to the east and the thunderstorms are developing. I want to throw just a touch of enhancement on here. Not so much inverse, but how about vapor two? And it's this, this. We can see some initial chemtrail clouds here initially, and then it becomes just this blooming band of cirrus as they're playing with this boundary between the, the, the tropical regions and then the, uh, the, the more temperate regions. But this all looks like it was initially chemtrail clouds. You can see the stripes, and then it just bloomed into the cirrus canopy uh, as the moisture arrived. So let's go back out to the west where the contrails were intense today, arcing over this ridge of high pressure. I was under here and had very few clouds or to, to, to work with. Uh, there was some right around sunset, but I was not able to get out with the camera to do any shooting. So I just have nothing photography-wise or photographically uh, for my location on this day. And this little zone of, of dry air, this is what this red represents, is now beginning to shift east and you can see the higher clouds now impinging on it. But most of this shield of clouds has at one time, or at least certainly has, the chemtrail debris in it. It's kind of tough to pick out the individual trails, but they are there. All right, let's go to the forecast. Here's the ridge off the west coast. 
and the cool northerly flow, the Hudson Bay cold, cold air, and then off, uh, off of Quebec under the low. Here's the low developing off of the Gulf of Alaska. This was Monday morning. I'm going to refresh this in hopes that the evening models run her in, and they're not. So we have this ridge remain right along the west coast through Tuesday morning. Cool northerly breezes will continue to push in through the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes states, and eventually through New England. As we move to Wednesday, things begin to change. This ridge begins to get pinched off, a little more narrow. One nice, big, healthy slug of, of water approaches California. This 570 line you see right here is often their rain line. Once you get the values, these height lines, these geopotential heights in decameters, you should get this 570 line farther south. That kind of opens up the way to get the rains in. So we can see that still a little bit south of San Francisco, but not as far south as the Southland, LA, San Diego. That, that, that isn't that far south. But as we get to Wednesday, Wednesday night in particular, and through Thursday, this onslaught of Pacific moisture will be hammering the Cascades, the Siskiyous, not quite the Sierra, but it won't be long before that happens. Then we can see these ripples continue to press inland through Thursday night and into Friday. So Northern California, Washington and Oregon, especially those coastal areas, are going to get wet. There will be snow in, in will be measured in feet, let's just put it that way. Uh, it'll hit into the blues of Northeast Oregon, it'll get into the bitter roots of Idaho and into Western Montana, and probably as far inland as, uh, as the Wind River Range in Wyoming, and probably into Yellowstone as well with some light snows. And then it just keeps coming. It keeps coming through this, uh, through this uh, coming weekend. And finally, as we get to Sunday morning, this 570 line begins to drop up far enough south that we might see some light showers into Southern California. But on the whole, this low is still out to shore. It's still out here. And so even through this weekend, after four or five days of rain, the low is still in the position to continue to bring moisture and rains on shore. When we look at the climate forecast, let's take a look at basin precipitation. This is, um, this is average. Let's update this and make sure we're, we've got the freshest data. So from November 26th, we are looking at the amount of precipitation in these watersheds through the western U.S. Through New Mexico, we're looking at 17% to 44, 47%. Colorado, we're sub 60%. Arizona were sub 60, 61%, a little bit better into Utah, and then much, much better from central Idaho. Uh, the Sierra is doing about normal. The southern Sierra not as well as, say, the northern Sierra. And Washington and Oregon are in pretty good shape. But as we pop out, look at the 6 to 10-day forecast from the Climate Prediction Center, we begin to see most of the nation on target for a continuation of the rather warm weather that we've had as of late. It does get trimmed back a little bit to the east as we move through the first week from 4 December to 10 December back east and the only above normal temperatures or below normal temperatures would be along the southeastern coast. Wet along the immediate northwest coast down to about San Francisco and then dry to the southwest, southern Plain states, Ohio, Tennessee River valleys and out to 8 to 10 days 8 to 14 days, that trend continues. So when we look at hazards over the next couple of days, it is high winds and it is rains along the northwest coast. Otherwise, it is simply a continuation of the drought across the west. And so we deal with funny clouds like this showing up, circular pulses with the debris of the chemtrails thrown through them. And so we have some aspect of weather engineering, cloud engineering, etheric engineering. Something is going on. And if you get pictures like this that are unusual, you can't explain, uh, share them with me on the Facebook timeline. Find Scott Stevens or Weather Wars, and we'll share them with the world. Thanks for listening, everybody. Keep looking up.